Good afternoon, you're watching Lunchtime News on TV1. But before we head into our stories, first we'll take a look at your headlines. Rainfall in excess of 100 millimeters forecast for tonight. 84,000 affected by the inclement weather. Cardwella Bridge at risk of collapsing, one lane closed. Joint opposition speaks out on the free trade agreement between Sri Lanka and Singapore. Into one of your leading stories now, the Department of Meteorology says the prevailing rainy condition in southern west part of the island is expected to enhance to some extent from today, particularly tonight. The department said heavy rains of about 100 millimeters can be expected at some places in the Saburagamua, western, central and northwestern provinces and in the Gol and Mathur districts. The gauge at the Gin River, which is at spill level, stood at 4.85 meters. The Baddega Managoda Road still remains inundated. Our correspondent said the Baddega Agalia Road is also flooded. Our correspondent added that the Baddega police have placed boats and relief teams on standby to face a possible disaster situation. The Inimankada area in Baddegama and Mapalagama area in Akurativa in Mapalagama are also underwater. In its forecast issued at 5.30 this morning, the Med Department said showers or thunder showers will occur at times in the western, southern, Sabaragamua, central and northwestern provinces. Showers or thunder showers will occur elsewhere, particularly after 2 p.m. Meanwhile, the Disaster Management Center says the number of those affected by rains and landslide has increased to 84,000. Its Assistant Director Pradeep Kodipili said 27,621 people who are displaced have been provided shelter at 194 camps. Kodipili added relief is being provided to affected. At the moment, the numbers were increased of the affected communities, uh, more than 84,000. It is exactly 84,543 people being affected and 27,000 are still uh, remaining in the safe evacuation centers. 194 safe uh, evacuation centers been located in uh, many areas of Sri Lanka. Probably the 14 districts have been uh, affected with uh, due to bad weather uh, condition uh, prevailing uh, since few days' time. Ten deaths been reported out of that, four deaths been reported uh, due to lightning activities. Uh, and flood level is not completely gone, but uh, there are a lot of floods still been remaining in uh, downstream area of uh, Kalaniganga and Kaluganga. Especially Kaluganga and Tartapur area also inundated and we have supplied uh, more boats and catamarans, uh, additional uh, resources to the Rathapur district, especially in uh, Kaluganga and uh, Nilwala Ganga and Ginganga also been uh, notified as flood in downstream area. Still, the people will be alerted uh, because of the flood condition. And uh, if they, are, you know, uh, they have issued a warning over the possibility of landslide in Kalutra, Kegol, Kaul, Ratapura, and Nuradej, still, still the Ampakala dot has been remaining and people will be advised. And if any signs of the landslide being issued, they have to uh, go from their locations to the safer areas. So, 117 call center number is uh, open for uh, 24 hour system. All the military and police and all the resources have been allocated in the affected areas. The now, a section of the Kadwela Biagama Bridge is at the risk of sinking in. The gauge at the Gin River, which is at spill level, stood at 4.85 meters. The Baddegama Nagoda Road still remains inundated. Our correspondent said the Baddegama Agalia Road is also flooded. Our correspondent added that the Baddegama police have placed boats and relief teams on standby to face a possible disaster situation. The Inimankada area in Baddegama and Mapalagama area in Akurativa in Mapalagama are also underwater. News for Sarusha Kumari Singh will now join us with a filed report on the inclement weather from Walampitiya. Now, a very good evening indeed for our viewers. Now, I am here at the uh, Vellampiti area in uh, Velevatta. Now, as you can see, the main road uh, of the area is completely uh, underwater and uh, the water level is uh, nearly knee height. Now, the uh, residents of this area, as you can see, 
um, is uh, gradually evacuating from this area because they do not have uh, clear drink drinking, uh, clean drinking water rather, and uh, good food for consumption. Now the authorities uh, have turned a blind eye uh, towards uh, this resident, these residents rather, and um, this uh, condition. Uh, it's been prevailing for three days now. Now we'll, we'll bring you the latest updates uh, what's happening here at Vallampitiya uh, uh, and of course not to forget uh, other areas in the island uh, which are uh, being uh, affected by these adverse weather conditions and the flood situations. For the, uh, till then, for the News First team, I am Tarusha Kumar Singha. Uh, Tarusha for that comprehensive report. With that, we move on to some weather-related news. As a result of increasing water levels, spill gates of a number of reservoirs have been opened. The Mahabali Authority says three spill gates of the Polgola Reservoir have been opened. The Putlam town has also been receiving heavy rainfall since this morning. The Puttalam district has been receiving incessant rain since Monday, ending a two-year-long drought. As a result, many minor wavers are overflowing. This is the Maha Karambara Ava Wever of the Karwalagas Wever Divisional Secretariat in Puttalam. This wever, which has not seen a drop of water in the last two years, is now reaching spill level. Our reporters state that this will be beneficial for nearly 200 acres of farmlands. Let's now take a look at footage that we have received on the inclement weather across the country captured by the Sri Lankan Air Force. Now, thanks to many general Sri Lankans, relief items have been pouring in since Monday night for the Sirisa Shakti Sahana Yatra as aids for the victim of the adverse weather. The relief items are being collected at three locations. One collection point has been set up at the head office of the Capital Maharaja Organization Limited in Braybrook Place, Colombo 2. You can also drop off your donations at the Stein Studio Complex in Ratmalana or at our Depanama Studio Complex. The items that are being collected for the Sirasa Shakti Sahane Yatra are rice, dal, sugar, tea, noodles, canned fish, biscuits, water and sanitary items. Our hotline 0114-896-896 is open for further inquiries. Sirasa Shakti TV1 Sahane Yatra was launched as a humanitarian effort to aid the people who have been displaced and affected by these adverse weather conditions. Now, as we all know, 24,000 families have been displaced and more than 68,000 families have been affected by this inclement weather condition across the island. We launched this effort or we launched this Sahana Yatra day before yesterday and donations have been pouring in day in and day out at all three collection places where we have lined up our staff to help you to provide assistance to our brothers and sisters who have been displaced by these inclement weather conditions. We are expecting more donations and we thank you for all of the donations that have come in thus far and we expect to see a high outcome and a high number of inflows from you as fellow Sri Lankans. Thank you.
Thank you, Drama, for that comprehensive report. With that, we move on to some more local news. Minister of Sustainable Development, Wildlife and Regional Development, Phil Marshall Sarath Fonseca, toured the Pathiago de area in Kalania to inspect the flood situation. Hmm. Some people have lived in these houses for more than 20 years. This problem has been there. If we are to find a long-term solution, we must build housing complexes. I've spoken about this with the Prime Minister and he agreed to it. But it costs a lot of money. The government does everything on a priority basis. But we must do this in the not-so-distant future. We have realized this and we have agreed upon it. Addressing a media briefing in Goa, Politburo member of the Frontline Socialist Party, Kumar Gunratna spoke about the issues faced by the present government. These two parties in government are falling into more problems and cannot govern as before. They can't even meet the lowest of the people's expectations, nor can they listen to them. They only have one thing to do. The prices of essentials are rising, the cost of living is rising. They must tax more as government revenues have dropped. There is nothing that could be done. They must draft policies as per the IMF and the World Bank. This is the kind of system in place at the moment. The joint opposition convened a media briefing to comment on the Sri Lanka-Singapore Free Trade Agreement. Cabinet approval has not been obtained for this, therefore this is not valid. If an agreement is signed in Sri Lanka, it needs to be done in a manner that is valid. This is the first agreement that is open to the services sector. It also includes something called the CPC 87000. If you are to locate this, you must first locate the UNP's central prediction classification. That lists drivers, clerks, domestic aides, caretakers, assistants, as well as laborers, machine operators and computer operators. Under the agreement, after all the tax concessions and benefits are given, any Singaporean company that was in Sri Lanka before the agreement came into effect will also receive those benefits and privileges. This is being done in a way to mislead the President, the Cabinet and the Ministers. This is signed by Minister Malik Samaravikrama and the Singapore Minister of Trade. It contains around 1,000 pages. Did the cabinet of ministers read it in its entirety? You must ask them that. Minister Patali Champika Ranavaka convened a press conference at the Urban Development Authority. Especially this year, the UDA has played a part in projects worth 103,115 billion rupees. That is to build 21,077 houses. Today there is no problem. There are no issues like armed forces destroying houses, people being forcefully evicted or land being sold to the wealthy. Nobody is taking anything by force. We have shown the country how to do this professionally and peacefully.